Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in Christ in the heavenly places Think about that guys Paul is saying that you and me are already blessed in Christ. You know, this is very contrary to how I used to pray. You know, when I used to pray, when I was a child, my prayer was bless daddy, bless mommy, bless uncle, bless auntie, you know, bless my sister, bless me. My prayer was asking God to bless me. Why? Because I wasn't blessed enough. that's that's how i was taught to pray so when i actually read this verse i i think i might have read this verse before but it made sense to me in the year 2012 for the first time 2012 2013 it made sense to me when it said blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has already blessed us i'm like what god has blessed me god has already blessed me then why am i praying for blessings lord bless me bless my papa bless my mummy why am i praying for blessings when god has already blessed me so paul is saying because you are blessed you know we are blessing god how does it begin blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ so you are pronouncing blessings over god because he has already blessed you but don't you know the famous uh hindi hindi praise song that says stuti aradhana upar jati hai ashish ashish lekar niche aati hai it means that you know when you give praise to god god blesses you and somehow our idea is that when we give something to god god returns you know in blessing in the form of blessing god's return gift is in the form of blessing that has been most of our theology that we need to do something we have to you know show our appreciation we have to give our praises we have to worship him then only he will bless us but this verse says that you are already blessed with every spiritual blessings in Christ in the heavenly places you are already blessed already blessed it's a past tense it's not something that is going to happen it's not something that is happening in the present it's a past tense it's a done deal that you are already blessed when were you blessed verse 4 says can you read verse 4 even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy okay. and blameless before him so when he did bless you he blessed you even as you were chosen when were you chosen you were chosen before the foundations of the world so in fact even before genesis 1 verse 1 happens in the beginning god created heaven and the earth he blessed you you were blessed even before god created heavens and the earth even before you were born even before you were in your mother's womb you and me were blessed with every spiritual blessings we were blessed with every spiritual blessings anything that you need anything that you will ever desire want you were already blessed with every spiritual blessings in christ who blessed you god the father when did he bless you before the foundations of the earth with what did he bless you with every spiritual blessings let me repeat that who blessed you god the father what did he bless you with with every spiritual blessings when did he bless you before the foundations of the earth are you listening to this you are already blessed see you don't have to pray for god to bless you any more because god has already blessed you God has already blessed you. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessings. So 
in the Greek, the word spiritual blessings is translated from the Greek word eulogia. Eulogia. From which our English word eulogy comes from. Do you know what eulogy is? Eulogy is good words. And in fact, you know, we live in a world where eulogy is only given when people die. When people die, you know, good words are spoken about them. Nobody speaks good words over people when they are alive, right? But when they die, they speak good words about him, about that person, how they live their lives. But what God has done is, even before you were born, God has spoken good words over your life. Every spiritual blessings are good words that God has spoken over your life because whatever God creates, creates out of words. Everything that you can see has been created out of his word and he has blessed you with every good word that you need in your life. He has blessed you with everything that you need for a life of godliness. Okay, who has blessed you? God the Father has blessed you. What has he blessed you with? Every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing comes in the form of good words. He has spoken good words over you. See, a lot of us, you know, a lot of us struggle with the identity crisis. You know, we have daddy issues. We have mommy issues. We have insecurity issues. There's so, so much of, you know, insecurity and identity. Why? Because sometime when we were growing up, bad words were spoken over us, right? And those bad words, we have remembered lifelong. For so long, we have remembered those bad words. Something that some might, someone might have spoken over you, like when you were five years old, you still remember that and you still feel the emotions of it. It still haunts you. It still feels traumatic. But think about this. Even before you were born, God spoke good words over you. Every good word he spoke over you. He blessed you with every spiritual blessings. Blessed you with every spiritual blessings. Amen. Now, let's read Ephesians 1 verse 3 and see it is God who blessed you. And God blessed you with what? With every spiritual blessings. When did he bless you? Before the foundations of the earth, right? If that is clear, let me ask you this question. Where did God bless you? That's my question. Where did God bless you? Now let's read Ephesians 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. So where are you blessed? You are blessed in the heavenly places. What are you blessed with? Every spiritual blessings. Who blessed you? God the Father blessed you. When did he bless you? Before the foundation of the earth. Where did he bless you? In the heavenly places. So your question might be, hey, hey Sam, if I'm already blessed with every spiritual blessings, then why am I not experiencing God's blessings over here? Because the thing is, you have to understand where are you blessed? You are blessed in the heavenly places. Now, just imagine if I have, if I have an account in the United States of America, and that account has $1 billion. Am I a billionaire? Of course, I'm a billionaire. But if I'm in India and I'm not able to withdraw from that account that is in the US, there's no point. I need to figure out a way on how to withdraw that money from the account that is in the US when I'm in India. Otherwise, I might be a billionaire on paper, but I might still live like a poor person. Similarly, most of us, we are blessed. We are spiritually billionaires, but because we don't know how to withdraw that spiritual account, we live like paupers. And that's why we need such fellowship to know the truth so that we can learn how to withdraw our spiritual blessings, even while we are on the earth. Am I making sense to you? Okay. Are you spiritually blessed? Are you blessed with every spiritual blessing? Of course you are. But the question is, do you know how to withdraw those spiritual blessings 
so that it can manifest in your life right here on the earth because if you don't know you know you you are a billionaire on paper but you will die like a poor person okay so where are you blessed you are blessed in the heavenly places now what are the heavenly places now to understand what are the heavenly places let me show you couple more scripture portions to understand what the heavenly places are okay so read with me ephesians 1 verse 20 that he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places so ephesians 1 verse 3 says that your blessings are in the heavenly places ephesians 1 verse 20 says that christ is seated at the right hand of god in the heavenly places are you getting this what's the first thing your blessings are there in the heavenly places second thing christ is seated at the right hand of god in the heavenly places so you, where your blessings are that is where christ is also christ is seated at the right hand of god in the heavenly places correct now let's see one more thing ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and raise the up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places now in Christ Jesus listen to this guys the previous verse said in Ephesians 1:20 that when Christ was raised from the dead what did god do he made him seated with him so christ is seated with god at his right hand in the heavenly places now ephesians 2 verse 6 says that when christ was raised we were also raised are you listening to this it is past tense it's not talking about something that is going to happen in the future it says we were also raised raised with whom raised with christ so where are you seated we are also seated in the heavenly places at the right hand of god do you understand this your blessings are there in the heavenly places Christ is there in the heavenly places you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places what does it mean i am seated with Christ in the heavenly places isn't that something that is supposed to happen in the future when christ died he died for you he died as you so that when christ is resurrected he is resurrected as you you were raised as him and now you are seated with him in the heavenly places so where are you seated you are in the heavenly places no sam but i am i am right now in delhi i am right now talking to you from zoom on the earth your body is on the earth but your spirit that that defines your identity your body does not define your identity it is your spirit that defines your identity your spirit is with christ at the right hand of god in the heavenly places are you getting this where is your spirit your spirit is at the right hand of god in the heavenly places but where is your body your body is on the earth now question is there's a third thing that you have which is called as the soul soul is basically your mind and your heart your soul acts as an interface between your spirit and your body Now the question is your body is on the earth your spirit is in the heaven where is your soul is it on is it in the spirit is it with the spirit or is it with the body is it in heaven or is it on the earth where is your soul the answer to that is the soul is wherever it is conscious of let me explain to you this so take a moment if i if i ask you take a moment close your eyes and imagine that you are in a beach in goa right where is your mind right now as you imagine it's it's in a beach in goa but where is your body your body is not in goa but your mind is in goa right so wherever you are conscious of that that is where your mind takes you similarly whatever reality you are conscious of your mind will take you there so if your spirit is in heaven and your uh, and your body is on the earth your mind whatever your mind is conscious of that will take your soul to that place so when 
when with our minds we are conscious of our spiritual reality where is our mind our mind is in heaven when our mind is conscious of the physical reality where is our mind on the earth are you getting this see we have a choice to make today we can either live from heaven or we can either live from the earth see a body is on the earth a body is designed in a way to live on the earth and our spirit is designed in a way to live in the heavens but our mind is where we make the choice do i want to live on the earth from heaven or do i want to live on the earth from an earthly perspective and paul is saying that just as your blessings are in the heavenly places where christ is in the heavenly places you are also seated with christ in the heavenly places Now the question to you and me is what choice do we make every day when we wake up in the morning do we make the choice that i don't want to live this life based on an earthly perspective or what this earth is throwing at me from a physical perspective of you know the three dimensions that are throwing at me but i want to live from a heavenly perspective because my identity my spirit being is with christ at the right hand of god it's a choice that we make consciously that's why paul says in colossians 3 verse 2 he says hey don't be so earthly minded be heavenly minded when when he's talking about be heavenly minded he's not saying just think about heaven think about the angels think about you know the the gold golden streets he's not saying that he's just saying that remember that you are seated with christ in the heavenly places so think from that perspective it's like you know our prime minister narendra modi has a position what is a position prime minister now does that mean that he has to sit in his position does he have to sit in the throne of a prime minister just to be just to act like the prime minister just to operate in the authority of the prime minister he has to sit in that particular throne no wherever he goes he might go to the us he might go anywhere he still acts like the prime minister because it is a position that is given to him you and me even though we are on the earth we have a position and a position is that we are seated with christ at the right hand of god we are seated with christ at the right hand of god there is a position that has been given to us and that position applies irrespective of where we are does that make sense guys okay let's revise this where are your blessings in the heavenly places right what else is there in the heavenly places christ is seated at the right hand of god in the heavenly places who else is there in the heavenly places with christ we are there i you we are seated with christ in the heavenly places amazing okay let's read the next verse ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 so that through the church the manifold wisdom of god might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places ashish can you read that again because it's very confusing so that Mm-hmm. through the church through the church the manifold okay through the church guys listen to that it does not say through god it does not say through jesus it does not say through the holy spirit it says through the church what what is through the church let's read further the manifold wisdom of god the manifold wisdom of might god might now be made known to the to be made known to whom to the rulers and authorities to rulers and authorities places. in the heavenly places are you listening to me so you are seated in the heavenly places why so that through you the manifold wisdom of god can be revealed to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places why are you seated in the heavenly places so that you can make known the mysteries of god so that you can make known the wisdom of god the wisdom of god is revealed to the church first see 
the devil the demonic powers the principalities of the air they are they are seeking wisdom from you to know what god is going to do in the coming days because it is through the church the wisdom of god is revealed to them are you listening to this why are you seated in the heavenly places not just to sit and relax you are seated there so that through you through the church the manifold wisdom will be made known to the rulers and authorities through the church okay let's read our final verse ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places see after reading from ephesians 1 coming to ephesians 6 which is the last chapter now he is saying we do not wrestle with flesh and blood but we fight against spiritual forces we fight against cosmic powers where are we fighting in the heavenly places where are we fighting guys in the heavenly places so what's the first point the first point is our blessings are in the heavenly places second christ is in the heavenly places third we are in the heavenly places fourth we are there in the heavenly places to reveal the multi faceted the manifold wisdom of god fifth we are fighting in the heavenly places if you don't understand the first four points how will you be able to fight the spiritual powers see the problem is we jump into the fifth point without understanding the chronological order of these truth we began how we began by being blessed with every spiritual blessing you are blessed with every spiritual blessings that's why now you can fight all the spiritual forces that are there in the heavenly places are you listening to this guys your blessings are there christ is there you are there you are revealing the wisdom of god the last point is you are fighting spiritual forces in the heavenly places now these spiritual forces that you are fighting in the heavenly places that means these spiritual forces are also there in the heavenly places but you need to understand when you are seated with christ you are above them even though they are in the heavenly places you are above them how do i know that read with me ephesians 1 verse 21 ephesians you are 1. seated far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come sorry ashish could you repeat that again far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come so there is rule and authority that you are fighting in the heavenly places they also exist in the heavenly places but where is christ seated christ seated far above say with me far above you are seated with christ so where are you seated you are also seated far above so these rule and authority that whom you are fighting in the heavenly places they are not at the same level as you are you are far above every rule every authority you are far above the the position that you have in christ the seat that you have in christ where you're seated is far above every power every rule every authority so you are fighting from a very superior position you're fighting from a very superior position now tell me something if you are blessed with every spiritual blessings and if you are seated with christ at the right hand of god and if you are far above all these principalities how can you not win how can you not win see guys we are not fighting for victory we are fighting from victory let me repeat that we are not fighting for victory we are fighting from victory this victory has already won has already been won by jesus 2000 years ago when he died on the cross and when he was raised from the dead you are fighting from victory how can you not 
overcome these principalities that are up beneath you we are not talking about positions of you know country we are not talking about presidents and prime minister we are talking about cosmic forces that govern the cosmos those cosmic forces are beneath you and me because we are seated with christ how can you not have a victorious life how can you be defeated tell me something see we live our lives as if everything is coming against us we live our lives as if it's so drained out right we feel so drained out this demon that demon i am having spiritual attack this and that but do you realize that you are seated with christ far above every power every rule every authority and that you are blessed with every spiritual blessings in christ in the heavenly places how can you be defeated how can you be defeated there's a match fixing that has happened and you've already won even before you started playing the result was decided that you've won you're not fighting for victory guys remember this you're not fighting for victory are you struggling today oh yes i'm struggling today are you going through difficulties oh yes i am going through difficulties but i am not struggling so that i can have victory i am struggling from a place of victory because jesus has done it all you are victorious you are more than conquerors because jesus has done it all he has paid the price he has defeated every power that is out there and you are seated with him you are seated with him far above every power every rule every authority you are seated with him nothing guys nothing there's absolutely nothing that can come against you if today we know that this is our identity if today we know that this is the authority that has been given to us i am telling you guys you will never live a defeated life you will never live a defeated life because you are fighting from victory there's no power in hell there's no devil that can beat you because you are fighting from victory okay see guys the devil is not attacking you the devil is just defending you are the ones who are attacking do you know that the devil is not on the offense he is on the defense whatever he is throwing out against you is it just his defense mechanism he is on the defense because you just as breathing the breath that god has given to you you are attacking his kingdom you are attacking his strongholds every praise that you make every thanksgiving that you do my goodness just by the presence of just by your presence is threatening him you are attacking him he is on the defense he is on the run let me show you this verse matthew chapter 16 matthew chapter 16 i think it's verse 17 or 18 and i tell you you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it listen to this jesus is saying jesus is saying you are peter which means small stone on this rock referring to himself okay because he is the stone on which the church is built not peter right so he says peter you are a small stone but on this rock on myself i will build my church who is building the church of christ not the pastors guys jesus is building his church understand this jesus is building his church on himself the foundation is christ and then what does he say and the gates of hades shall not prevail against the church the gates of hades shall not prevail against the church now think about this whenever a fight is happening there is one attacking army and one defending army is that right whenever a battle happens there's a one that is attacking the one that is defending now when jesus says the gates of hades shall not prevail tell me something who is the one attacking and who is the one defending 
the one that is behind the gates are the one who is defending right and the one who is attacking the gates are the one who is attacking the army is attacking army is that right the one who is behind the gates is the one who is defending the castle who is trying to defend what they have and the one who is attacking the gates is the attacking army so when it says i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it tell me who is the one attacking and who is the one defending we are not hiding behind the gates of hell it is the devil that is hiding behind the gates of hell so who is attacking the gates of hell it is a church that is attacking the gates of hell we are on the offense why because we are winning this war for 2000 years my goodness we think that we are on the defense we think that we are being attacked by spiritual forces but let me tell you that the church is attacking the spiritual forces out there the church is attacking because the goal is that the kingdom of god will fill the earth we are the ones who are attacking and it is christ who is building the church if you think that the church is getting weaker and weaker huh let me tell you it is far from the truth because it is christ who is building this church it is christ who is building this church the church has only got stronger from the first century it has only got stronger from the first century i don't know if i have the time but i really want to share this okay because for a very long time i thought the quality of the church is decreasing with time and finally it will be so bad that jesus will have to come and just take away the church but it is far from the truth you know in daniel chapter 2 king nebuchadnezzar don't don't take it read it in your own time okay but listen to me daniel chapter 2 king nebuchadnezzar has a dream which daniel explains to him the dream is of an image the image the head is made of gold the chest is made of silver the middle portion is made of bronze and the rest is made of iron and how daniel interprets is that that image represents the kingdom of the worlds where the head represents the babylonian kingdom then the next represents the persian kingdom that comes after the babylonian kingdom and then after that represents the greek kingdom if you remember alexander the great represents him and his kingdom then the you know the the iron part represents the roman empire the dream goes like this that this image is so huge it's a frightening image why because it it shows the kingdom of the world but the dream ends like this that a stone comes from nowhere and it specifically says it is not a human cut stone it is not a man made stone a stone comes from heaven hits the image at its feet hits the image at its feet and the image is totally broken shattered into pieces then the dream goes like this that that small stone becomes slowly becomes a big mountain and it fills the earth that small stone becomes a big mountain and fills the earth now tell me something who is that stone who is that stone that is not cut from any man made hands who is that stone his name is jesus jesus comes establishes the kingdom of god and that kingdom of god is only increasing it cannot decrease because the kingdom of god has been established by jesus the kingdom of god is the church is the body of christ that has been established for 2000 years the church has only grown stronger for 2000 years the church has only grown wiser so i'm telling you it is unfair for us to say look at the first century church and say that they were better no guys they were not better because you don't know the problems that they faced through you don't know the issues that they had if Jesus is building this church then i am willing to believe that this church has only got better this church has only got stronger this church has only got wiser because it is Jesus who is building his church 
see it's like a relay race when one person races and passes the baton to the uh, next person it's like a relay race that is happening where the church is getting stronger with every generation because it is christ who is building it that's why i want to encourage you what are you fighting today whatever you are fighting is beneath you because you are seated with christ you are seated with christ you are seated with christ nobody can ever snatch away that victory from you because christ is the one who has fought and won that victory for you you are fighting from a place of victory now the question is if i am fighting from a place of victory do i even have to try do i even have to try to overcome this battle i'm let me assure you with this even if you fight this battle today the war is won okay if today you have a bad thought and if you fall into that doubt if today you have a sinful habit and if you fall into that sinful habit let me tell you that nothing will take that position from you you are still seated with christ you are still seated with christ there's absolutely nothing that can change your position but then why do i have to fight this why do i have to overcome this thought why do i have to overcome this emotion why do i have to you know uh why do i have to repay good when somebody does evil to me why do you have to do that you know why because like i said the church is progressively getting wiser getting stronger getting better every personal victory that you have in your daily walk with god is a cosmic victory for the church to grow into maturity into the image of christ are you listening to this see when david was fighting the lion and the bear nobody was there to applaud him and say wow david what a great job let me let me testify about this in the church nobody was there to applaud him and appreciate him but it is that victory that paved way for him to kill goliath so that the israelites could celebrate in the victory of david similarly every thought that you are fighting every thought that you're struggling with every emotion that you're struggling with no matter how private it is understand this it matters to god it matters to the church because every time when you win over that you win in that moment it's a cosmic victory for the church it's a cosmic victory because you're not fighting against just thoughts and emotions you're fighting against cosmic powers in the heavenly places they are real things you might think these are just thoughts and emotions no guys these are thoughts and emotions thrown at you from cosmic powers so when you win over these thoughts and emotions you are winning over cosmic powers you are paving a way for the church to grow so does it matter does it matter that i fight this battle does it matter that i win over this emotion does it matter that i repay good when people throw evil with evil at me yes it matters it matters it matters for the church because you are paving a way for the church to grow into the maturity of christ every private battle that you fight and i'm telling you the greatest testimonies are stuff that can't be testified on the church i understand that because your private battle is so private is so personal that you can never share with anybody not your husband girlfriend boyfriend wife you may not be able to share with anybody but understand this because you have won that battle you are making it better for your children for your generations to come your our parents struggled because we don't have to struggle where where we are struggling our children will not struggle are you getting this so every struggle that you win over matters matters it matters to god it will matter to your children amen okay so let's quickly revise this you are blessed with every spiritual blessings in christ in the heavenly places you are blessed you are blessed with every spiritual blessings where you are blessed that is where christ is and where christ is that is where you are and you are there so that you can reveal the wisdom of god to the rulers and authorities and 
it is in the heavenly places that you are fighting these principalities but know that these principalities are not at the same level they are beneath you because you are far above every rule every authority every power every principalities so there is no battle there is no war there is no fight that you cannot win because you are far above them you are seated with christ i'm not talking about tomorrow i'm not talking about when jesus comes i'm talking about today you are seated with christ in the heavenly places the biggest blessing god did was raising you and making him making you and us seated with christ that's the biggest blessing because you are far above all these things that is troubling you you are no longer defeated because you are fighting from a place of victory amen whatever is coming against you cannot beat you because he who is in you is greater than the one who is coming against you is greater than the one come on let's close our eyes and pray father we thank you for this word that you have blessed us with every spiritual blessings in christ you have blessed us with every spiritual blessings father this is our prayer that we will actually comprehend or actually even begin to understand that how much we are blessed because father we don't want to live a defeated life we are victorious in you we are seated with you far above every power there is absolutely nothing that can touch us today there is absolutely nothing that can overcome us because we are seated with you in jesus name we pray amen